television is the comedy about the dysfunctional family. Just like it's the explanation for the success of the Republican Party that they figured out that they would become the champion of a forever gone family because it was a real problem for the American people and the Democratic Party still hasn't understood it. So we have a, a, a situation in which the mass of workers feel continuously at risk, in trouble, under pressure, while watching the rich become richer. That's an impossible situation to last forever. We have lots of mechanisms to keep it going. The economic crisis blew it out of the water. The combination of 30 years of this situation I just described, and then an economic crash, which throws millions of people out of work, which makes your neighbor lose his or her home to foreclosure, which jeopardizes your job, and then to watch a government that clearly is gonna help those who need it least at the top of the chain, and do very little or nothing for you, it's too much. And the defense of capitalism, which in America goes like this, it's the system that delivers the goods. It doesn't. It's now delivering you a lot of shit. And that's a problem. And that creates an audience. To go back where I began, and I'll close up in one more minute. To go back where I began, the reason that the opportunities to speak come is so often is less interesting than the quality of the interviews. I've done media interviews all my life. The new phenomenon is this. The interviewer doesn't ask me questions as if I were a weird, unusual freak from the left. So that the interviewer pats himself or herself on the back for having had the broad-mindedness to bring such a strange character onto his or her program. That's how it used to be. Now, instead of being outside the acceptable range of discourse, I, and it's taken me a while to adjust, am inside. I have a point of view, and it has its pros and cons. And the conversation is what a conversation should have been. I can talk about capitalism, and I can say, as my basic mantra, the United States can do better than capitalism, and my audience finds that interesting. Are they all agree with it? Are they? but it's interesting. Last point. In the United States, all the old organizations of the left cannot figure out yet, for reasons good and bad, what to do about this. Plus, the average population sees those organizations as fundamentally irrelevant if they know that they exist there at all, and that includes the unions. So there are going to have to be radical changes in these organizations if they're going to be the vehicle to make this anti-capitalism into a movement, or there'll have to be new organizations. That's the condition of the anti-capitalist left. Enormous, enthusiastic, desperate. But what we lack are the organizational forms and a clear vision of where to go. Either or both of those will make an enormous explosion of anti-left politics in the United States that will surprise everybody. Thank you.